All right. So for about the last eight or nine weeks, you've been listening on a regular basis to guided mindfulness practices. You've learned and listened to the focused attention practice, the body scan, open monitoring, and now this week, the connection practice. And in many ways, as we listen and as we reinforce the experience of sitting with these guided instructions, we become increasingly adept and intuitively able to guide ourselves. And whether we do that at times uh, for formal periods of practice or whether we drop them into moments of the day when things are getting a little challenging perhaps and a little bit of practice would be helpful for cultivating or reestablishing a little bit more of an aware and present state, we're able to do that. And that's one of the reasons why at this stage we're also increasingly attentive to what the instructions for the different practices are, what they have in common, and how they're slightly different in terms of what they offer us. Ultimately, of course, what they offer you depends on your own experience with these practices. There's nothing I can say or anybody else can say or write about them that can be more meaningful than your own experience with them. This week, you have the opportunity to guide a classmate in the practice. That's its own interesting and important opportunity. There's the mindfulness instruction that underlies the guided practice, and there's also speaking and guiding, mindfully aware of doing so, and listening, mindfully aware of the listening. So not only is it a mindfulness practice that you're guiding, but we're also exploring how to be in a more mindfully aware state as we're doing so. And this is, of course, something that we've been discussing throughout the semester in different forms. So here's a little bit of um, input on what can make for a more, I think, productive and meaningful uh, practice that you have with each other and also letting you know what some of the um, things to share with me afterward are going to be. What you'll share afterward are your experiences or your observations guiding the practice. And I'm recommending that you make it simple on yourself after you finish guiding the practice and you and your partner go uh, on to your own days. You reach out to me with a text message and just let me know in a few sentences what it was like guiding the practice. That will take care of that. Uh, also, you'll be recording the practice that you're guiding and you'll be emailing that in sometime this week. So when you're guiding your partner and it plan to and anticipate having your phone or whatever device that you would use for guiding the practice. Now, one thing that you might want to do to make all this relatively straightforward and easy is to set up a Zoom session with your partner and have that Zoom session recorded. And each of you can then do your guiding of the practice and you can just send me a link to that Zoom recording and everything's pretty much been taken care of. Uh, of course, you don't have to do it over Zoom. That may not be convenient. Uh, for whatever reason, and you don't have to do it visually seeing each other, although that's encouraged. You could also do it um, talking over the phone to each other. But this is meant to be a, a serious opportunity to be taken seriously. You may find that it creates like a little discomfort in, in doing this type of a, of a form of, you know, interacting with each other. And so the tendency to make it where I don't see you and I'm on the phone and whatever, I think is there and that's something to be mindfully aware of. But however you and your partner decide to play that out is entirely up to you, and, and you use your own better judgment in that regard. Uh, now, with regard to the script that you have to guide, you'll find that the script is about three pages, and if you were to read the words, just read, 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 you'd probably be done in about 30, 45 seconds. But this is going to be five minutes, and so that's where you have the opportunity to, as I strongly encourage, read through it several times, so that you're familiar with where it is and how it's moving. You'll find that the opening and the closing is similar to what you've been doing all along. Uh, so it'll be very familiar to you. And even the content, while it might be a little different in terms of the instruction, is very similar uh, to the instruction that you've been doing. Also know that your intention is to guide your partner skillfully, to have it be a meaningful practice for them. So when you're guiding them and when you're being guided, try not to break out of the role of being the guider and being the one who's guided. There can be a tendency to laugh or to be you know, defensive about, you know, I didn't do that well. I'm sorry if I didn't do that well. Try to hold, be aware that of those inclinations if they arise and, and try not to necessarily act on them. You will be fine just to create a five minute period of time for somebody to sit and just be present with a little bit of the guidance that you offer is really meaningful. Now, uh, when you do guide, 
Endeavor to guide in a way that's fluid. Endeavor to guide in a way that has space, that allows your partner space to have their own experience as you guide them along. And that's why the 45 seconds of actual words that you turn into five minutes is really dependent on how you deliver that practice. And I'll suggest to you for what it's worth, and maybe you'd have realized this on your own, when I guide you all in class, I'm very much guiding myself. So even though you'll be reading this to your partner so that everybody can be receiving the same experience and everybody can be delivering the same guided practice, know that the more present you are for the experience, the less self-conscious you are or whatever else might arise, the less distracted you are, uh, the more you'll also be able to be guiding yourself as you're guiding your partner. And that will, I think you'll find be interesting in the ways it can um, be a practice for yourself as well. Uh, you know, here I have Moonlight Sonata, a classic piece by Beethoven. It's been performed for a, a more than a hundred years by thousands and thousands of symphonies and orchestras and they are all using the same script. They're all playing the exact same notes with really the exact same uh, spacing in between even and yet the subtleties of how one delivers it, how an orchestra and its members um, perform it, how the conductor um, guides that process makes them all unique and some just beyond extraordinary, there's something about it, and others very, you know, you know, nicely done, but all the exact same content. And so part of what we're exploring is, is how it is that even the exact same content, and this of course applies to when you're in court making a presentation, how that presentation can be received differently and delivered differently based on, among other things, how present and steady and um, there you are for the experience. And so this is moving in that direction uh, with a mindfulness practice. So I hope you find that helpful. If you have any questions, um, let me know or let Samantha know. Alrighty, I will hope you all have a good time with this exercise. Um, please remember to record it and then to uh, afterward when convenient for you, uh, send me and Samantha that recording. All right, take care.